In this video, I will show you how to create your first ASP.NET Core MVC application. So let's click on create a new project. Then here, let's select C Sharp, let's select Web. Then we need to select ASP.NET Core Web application with MVC. So if you don't find this option, then we need to scroll down. Then let's click on install more tools and features. Then in this window, we need to select this option, ASP.NET and Web Development, so we need to select it. Then we need to click on Install. So in this window, let's select ASP.NET Core Web App with MVC, then Next. Let's provide the name of the application, then Next. Then here we can select the version of .NET, so I will use .NET 7. Then let's click on Create. So now the project is created successfully, and you can see that we have several folders and files. So the first folder that we have is the Properties folder. It contains a single file that allows us to configure how we want to run the application. So we can open it, and here we can see that we have these profiles, HTTP and HTTPS. So for the moment, we are using the HTTPS profile. So here we can change the name of this profile, so we can call it Web App, for example. So when we use this profile, the application will start at this port number. So we can change it, and you can write 4000, for example. Let's save the file, and let's select the new profile. So let's select Web App. Let's run the application. So here we can see that our application is running at this port number, which is 4000. Then we have 3W root folder, which contains the public files of this application. So we have CSS, JavaScript, and additional libraries. Then we have the controllers folder. So it contains the different controllers of this application. And by default, we have the home controller. So this controller contains two actions, the index action and the privacy action. So every action will display its own view. So view that we have here is the view that corresponds to this action, and it is available in the Views folder. So under Views, we have Home that contains the different views of the Home controller. And we have Index that will be displayed when we access to this action, and Privacy that will be displayed when we access to this second action. So to go to the Index view, we can either go to the Explorer, then we can open it from here, or we can make a right click in the index action, so we can make a right click, then go to view. And this is the index view. Then we have the models folder, so in this folder we can create the different models of the application. Also under views we have the shared folder that contains the layout file. So this layout contains the layout of this application. So here we have the navbar, and it contains two items, the home item and the privacy item. So when we click on home, we will execute the index action of the home controller. Then we have the file appsettings.json. So we can use this file to store some parameters of the application. Then we have program.cs. So this is the main file of the application. It allows us to configure and to run the application. For example, we can use this file to add services to the service container. And also we can use it to add middlewares that will be executed before and after the execution of the different actions of the different controllers. So in this file, we define the route pattern that allows us to define routes and to access to the different actions of the different controllers. And by default, we will use this pattern. So by default, the different routes will be composed by the name of the controller and the name of the action. And also we have an optional parameter, which is the ID. So if we don't provide the name of the controller, then we will execute the home controller. And if we don't provide the name of the action, then we will execute the index action. So by default, we will execute the index action of the home controller, which is this action. Now let's create a new controller. So in the controllers folder, we can make a right click, then add, then controller. 
Let's select MVC controller empty, then add. And let's call it contact controller. Then let's create the view of the index action. So the name of the view should be equal to the name of the action. So to create the view, we can make a right click inside the action. So we can make a right click here, then add view. Let's select razor view empty, then add. And let's call it index.cshtml. So this is a command, we can delete it. And here between these two brackets, we can write any C sharp code. So for example, we can define a variable and we can display its value. So to display its value, we can write at then the name of the variable. So like this, the value of this variable will be displayed in the page. Then here we can write any HTML code. So we can create this bootstrap row that contains one column that will be displayed in the center of the page. And also we have a rounded border and some paddings. Then we have this H2 element that contains the text contact form and this text will be displayed in the center of the page. Now let's add a link to this index page in the navbar. So let's go to the layout file and in the nav element we need to create a new item. So let's copy this item. Let's paste it here. Let's change the text of this item. So let's write contact us. Then the name of the action is the index action. And the name of the controller is the contact controller. So we need to write contact without controller. Let's run the application. Let's click on contact us. So here we can see that the URL is slash the name of the controller and we don't have the name of the action because by default the index action will be executed. So this is the index action of the contact controller. This is 100 which is the value of this variable that is displayed just here. And this is the title of the page. Now we don't need this variable anymore, so let's delete it. Then let's display some contact details in this page. So we can create one row that contains two columns. In the first column we have the email address of the website and the second column is empty for the moment. Then we have the second row that contains address in the first column and the second column is empty. Now we need to pass the email address and the address from the action to the view. So let's go back to the controller. We can define two fields. So this is the email address and this is the address. So they are private and read only. Now let's pass the email address and the address to the view. So we can either use view data or view back. I will pass the email address using view data and the address I will pass it to the view using view back. So here in view data, I created a key called email address and its value will be the email address that we have here. And in view bag, I created a new property called address and it is equal to this variable. Now let's update the view and let's display the value of the email address that is available in view data and the address that is available in view bag. So here we will display the email address. So let's add at then view data of email address. Then here we will display the address that is available in view bag. So let's add at view bag dot address. Let's run the application. And we obtain this page. So this is the email address and this is the address. Now let's create the contact form. But first we need to create a model that allows us to read the submitted data. So in the models folder, let's create a new model. And we can call it contact DTU. Then let's create the different properties of this model. So we can create the first name, which is required. We can create the last name, which is also required. We can create the email property that allows us to read the email address of the user. So it is required and also it should have the email address format. 
Then we have the message which is required. Now let's use this model. So let's go to the index page. And at the beginning, we need to define the type of the model. So let's add at model. And our model is of type contact DTU. Now let's create a form and let's bind it to this model. So this form will be submitted using the post method to the same URL, which is the index action of the contact controller. Then let's create the different fields of this form. So we can create this row that contains two columns. In the first column, we have a label with the text first name. And in the second column, we have the input field that is associated to the first name property of contact DTU. Then we have this span to display any validation error related to the first name. We have the second row that allows us to display the last name. So this is a label with the text last name. And this is the input field that is associated to the last name property of the model. Then we have this row that contains the email address. So this is the input field that is bound to the email address property of the model. And here we have a span for the validation errors. Then we have the last row that allows us to display the message. So we have a text area that is associated with the message property of contact DTU. Then let's add the submit button. So this is the submit button that allows us to submit the form. Let's run the application. And we obtain this form. So now we need to create another action in contact controller that allows us to process the submitted data. So let's go to contact controller and we need to create another action called index. So let's copy this action. Let's paste it here. So this action will be accessible using the post method. So we need to decorate it with the HTTP post attribute. And it requires the submitted data, which is available into a model of type contact DTU. So just here, we can add a parameter of type contact DTU. Then let's pass this model to the view. So just here we can write the name of the model, which is model. Then let's check if the submitted data is valid or not. So if the model state is not valid, this means that we have some errors in the submitted data. In this case, we can return the view and we can provide it with the submitted data. Otherwise, the submitted data is valid. In this case, we can store the data in the database. Then we can display a success message. So we can add a new property in ViewBag. So we can add success message to ViewBag and it is equal to your message is received successfully. Also to clear the form, we need to delete model from the view. So let's delete it. And also we need to call model state dot clear. Now let's display this success message in the view. So just above the form, let's check if we have the success message or not. So if viewbag.successMessage is not null, then we will display a bootstrap alert of type success that contains the success message. Let's run the application. So for the moment, the form is empty. Let's click on submit. And we have these validation errors. Now let's fill the first name and last name. Then submit. So here we did not lose the data of first name and last name, and we have validation errors with the email and the message. So now let's fill the form. Then submit. So this time the submitted data is valid. That's why we have this success message.